Hello and welcome back to Girls Empowered. My name is Naomi and special thanks for joining us today. Our show aims to create conversation for both young women and men to break boundaries and discuss societal struggles the youth face. Join me for our roundtable discussion with youth producers Vian and Tati. Welcome ladies, I just want to thank you for joining me on our roundtable discussion. How are you guys doing today? I'm good. And you? I'm good. Thanks I'm for having good. us. So Tati, what, are, what is our first topic today? Our first topic today is Issa Rae's. So I know that Issa Rae, she started out with her web series. Um, I think it was called Awkward Black Girl. And I know that she ended up getting her own show on HBO called Insecure. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, she's a producer, actress. Um, she's known for Exhale, The Choir, and now she's starring in Insecure. And she actually created it, produced it, and is leading in it. So, pretty impressive. Um, fun fact, <laughs> she was named, she was in um, Forbes' list of 30 under 30 in 2012 and 2014. Wow. So, she's up there. So, I just want to talk a little bit about Insecure. So, Insecure explores the black female experience from the perspectives of the two female protagonists, Issa and Molly, who met in UCLA and are in their late 20s. And I think the most important part about, like, the backstory of the show is that as a child growing up, she was criticized for acting and sounding white, which she felt was crucial for incorporating the struggle into her show. And um, she also attended Stanford as an African-American major, so. Oh, wow. It's amazing. Yeah, I feel like Insecure is like the show and the concept is it's really simple and it's basically just following her around and stuff. Yeah. But it's like a really crucial show because it's, you know, representing normal black women, you know, working class, just living their lives. And there's not a lot of shows out there like that. I think also that the series, it doesn't only explore like social and racial issues, but also like issues that relate to the contemporary black experience, but also their career and relationship experiences as well. Right. Um, she's also a web series creator, and she has, you know, as you mentioned, Awkward Black Girl. Um, and it just shows that women of color can be more than just loud and outspoken, yeah. and you know, that they can be awkward and they can have their moments. So I think that's really important. Lisa Ray challenged double standards in her show, Insecure, by showcasing male nudity, even though women tend to be treated as an object in media. So, speaking of women, in ob women being objects in media, uh, do you guys know what double standards are? Yeah. So, I actually have a couple that are actually kind of like... Mm. Okay, so my first double standard is it's okay for a man to be shirtless, but it's not okay for a woman to breastfeed, and it's seen as controversial, and it's even banned from social media. What do you guys think about that? Well, I kind of agree with it. Why? Because you should, I understand you're going to have a blanket over yourself, and you just want to breastfeed your child. Just do it in a private place when you're by yourself, in your house, covered. <laughs> I don't okay. know. I feel like... Just the fact that it's okay for men and not okay for women is the biggest issue. Yeah. And, um, you know, like, breastfeeding is a natural thing that, it is you know, any thing. woman who's a mother has to do. So she should have the right to do it where she needs to if time calls for it. So, so I have another one, which is curfews. So I don't know if you guys have siblings, but... Have you noticed that it's sometimes it's okay for your siblings to get home later than you? And you're just like, well, why? And your parents tell you, well... All the time. He's a guy, so he can get home later at whatever time he wants. But, you know, you're a little bit more delicate, so you have to get home at an earlier time. My little brother used to take me to school and pick me up. And your I used to look... Brother? Yeah, Tony. He used to pick me up and take me home. That, uh, yeah, never changed. younger than you. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I have um, dress codes in schools. Um, I think it's a really big issue. I'm always seeing like memes of girls that have to put a giant t-shirt over their outfit because it's too revealing. 
or it's um, too distracting yeah, for the males. The distracting part learn. is so stupid because it's like, yeah. what what about my shoulders <laughs> or my like legs is distracting to a male and it's like such an impending thing that guys can't pay attention in school. Speaking of dress codes, I have a double standard here. It says that like certain people, like a, like me for example, I can be like, oh, I like to dress in male and female clothing. But for a guy, for example, it's not okay for him to dress in female clothing because society looks at him like, oh, like you're gay or oh, that's you shouldn't be wearing that because those clothes are for girls. So I feel like why can't anyone just wear what they want to wear, you know? Like, right. why can't you feel comfortable wearing what you want to wear if that's what you're comfortable in? Like, you always have to go outside, and then there are those, like, types of people that are always staring you up and down, like, what's wrong with him? This is a great way to tie into our next segment, Girls on the Go, which follows Vianne and Kyle as they go in depth about gendered products. Hey, my name is Vianne, and welcome to Girls on the Go. Today joining me is Kyle. What's good, Kyle? How you doing? Hey, what's up, Vianne? Doing well. So today we're going to be looking at gendered products. What are those again? Um, gender products are basically products that target a certain gender based on sex and color. They use different things. Right. So let's get it. Let's go. All right. So here we are in Target, walking through the aisles. <laughs> Got my man Kyle with me. What's up? Yes, let's see what we can find. <laughs> so we went straight to the men's section. And off the bat, you can already see the really dark gray colors and red a lot of blues yeah and the smells very very masculine yep very overbearing and <laughs> manly i guess you could say how do you feel about old spice i don't like old spice <laughs> it's overbearing for me right and the commercials are stupid Now we're at the razors. Yep, um, more of the dark colors. Green, the orange, The prices red. seem pretty cheap for Some razors. good quality razors. <laughs> and there's a lot of like robots on them. Like it's like- <laughs> Transformers. Green. Yeah, kind of feel to it. <laughs> orange is surprisingly like a popular color with males. Right, really dark, the black and gray. Now we're on to the women's section. Oh yeah, this is beautiful. Pretty pinks, <laughs> purples. purples. So have you heard of the pink tax? Oh yeah, isn't that when pink products that are marked towards women have higher prices than other items? Exactly. In 2015, the New York City Department of Consumer Affairs published a study comparing nearly 800 products from more than 90 brands looking for price differences. On average, products for girls or women cost 7% more than comparable products for men and boys. That's crazy, especially when those products literally do the same thing. The most annoying part of that tax is that women statistically earn less money than men to begin with, and then they want to charge us more for products geared towards us. Where is the logic? So here we have a live men's and women's vitamins. And you can see on the side that the men's is supposed to support muscles and the women's it says just bones. <laughs> but it's the same exact vitamins. <laughs> same ingredients, same amount. They're the same thing. And even kids' products. Mouthwash. The princess for the girls. Right, Avengers. Even goldfish. And there's me dropping them. Yep. Spider-Man and Barbie. Right, and it keeps on reinforcing, like, this is what you This is what it has to be. Right. Like, guys like Spider-Man and superheroes and girls is just princesses. Look at me as Superman. I look beautiful in that dress. <laughs> That's all we have for Girls on the Go. Thanks, Kyle, for joining me. Thank you for having me. Back to Naomi at the studio. Today here on Girls Empowered, we have a special performance from Jasmine Neal. You're broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round. And you can find a fighter, but I see it in you so we can walk it on out and move mountains. We gon' walk it out 
It's getting hard to breathe, and I know you feel like dying, but I promise we'll take the world to its feet and move mountains. We'll take it to its feet and move mountains, and I'll rise up. Thanks for joining us here today on Girls Empowered. See you next time.